any other questions from our team? Well, my job is to round this up, what Vern has been talking about. A couple things that I thought was important in his presentation was the words desire versus risk. Whether you've got a business that does $10 a day or you've got a business that does $10 billion a day, you've got to measure what you feel about what you're doing versus the risk to do it. And if you don't run a business, you run your life, and your life is exactly the same two aspects, risk versus desire. The other thing is that I thought needed to be brought up is when you're making your plans, when you're borrowing your money, when you're setting up your purchasing of fixtures, etc., etc., is to plan on the unexpected. And that's where the extra money comes in when you go to the bank or to an angel or to your aunt and uncle or your dad and mom to say, hey, I want to do something. Always add a little bit more for it to offset the unexpected. And, you know, it seems a lot of people fail because they didn't. Okay? Tonight's challenge is the business plan. And I had a very, very nice conversation with a gentleman out in California who supplied me with about 12 business plans, all of which were way too big for me to handle. So, but I did find one that I tailor-made for this group tonight. Each of you are going to get a copy of this. Each of them has your name at the top of it. You're going to make your notes on this form right here, and then you're going to hand them back to me. Okay? I'll give you a fresh copy for you to take home with you. It's a handout. But this one I want to keep for posterity. This is the first effort, first event of this sort, and I'd like to have this as something to go on. Your job, with the information that you've garnered from the business department, from the information that you've garnered from us three guys here, and the loads of information that you already have up here with common sense, I want you to pick the business plan apart and tell us what they did wrong. What's wrong with this? What could be added to it? What needs to be changed? There's some really simple stuff in here that I've left out, and there's some pretty important stuff that's been left out of this business plan. At the end of this evening, you'll get another copy of this business plan, which is the 35-page edition. This is very small compared to the actual one that a I think they did $59 million their first year. Okay? Pick it apart. Make notes. Work amongst yourselves. You're the team. The three of you talk it over. Uh, normally, I think you would be given about 10 minutes to do this in competition, so we're going to try to keep it at about 10 minutes tonight. Normally, you'd be given about 7 minutes to present your findings. We're going to give you about 10 minutes because we have that much to spare. And then at the end of it, that all of us will sit down and question you about what your findings were. The idea is that you can walk out the door tonight and make a rudimentary business plan with this information that you've got to get up here. Any questions on the challenge? Nope. Okay, hint. <clears throat> they were given a hint to, to split up the report and do it in sections. The product that says here that a minor deviation, the amount of coffee in the shot can really uh, poorly impact the product. So I thought that they should have, they should focus on more than just their espresso. Yeah, I I'd glanced at They need um, some way to differentiate their coffee from, or their business from the other. It's hard not to jump around. Things. <laughs> from the other um, coffee shops in the area that are also targeted with college students. So we thought maybe um, some kind of like study rooms or meeting rooms so that groups of college students could meet in the coffee shop, but it'd be a little bit quieter, a little more separated from just the regular cafe area. So that's just one of the ways we thought that would maybe differentiate their company from others. And then 
like in uh, section 1.2, employee training. Um, Sydney's going to cover that later under organization. Um, we need to clarify some stuff there. Marketing strategies, David's going to clarify later as well. Um, so like in 1.3 when it says unique place, we really want to, we, I don't think they identified really what sets them apart besides higher quality things. Um, and if they still want to remain competitive price-wise, I think they need to do some other things rather than just being better. Okay. Um, uh, description, anything in the company description that you found was? Yeah, we thought um, a little bit more clarification on the bottom paragraph when it's talking about the cost of like the espresso machine. Um, maybe, I don't know, it's hard to tell for us whether how much they've researched it. You know, if they had maybe a specific name of an espresso machine, if we were a bank we could see exactly if 6,000 is close, how, how much is rounded, mm -hmm. whether or not they have an actual quote from that company or they're just guessing. And then what kind of machines are they going to, I mean, is 6,000 expensive for a machine? Are they going to go for a really high quality one that they're going to last for a long time? Or if they go under, is it going to have a high resale value? And just some more specifics on that area would be nice. Um, on the next page, in, under 2.3, the company locations and facilities, another thing there would be if they were to implement something to set them apart with those meeting rooms, um, it would be a little bit different than their original floor plan here, right it on here. Okay. So if we can jump to industry analysis. Okay. Um, again, talking about conference room stuff. On the competition page, um, they identify their biggest, one of the busy, their second biggest competitor was Cafe Aroma that has about 25% of the customer base in the area. Mm -hmm. And again, they basically said they want to be like that, which I think is a bad idea if there's going to be another one in the area. So I think they really need to identify how they're going to change be different from Cafe Roma. I think they already know how they're going to differentiate themselves from Bucks of Stars. The first thing I saw with marketing was that they were basing their the bread and butter product, um, high margin espresso drinks. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of they made it sound like it was hard to make them really good. Um, down near the bottom of 3.1, it says that a minor deviation from the amount of coffee in the shot negatively affects the quality of the drink. And I think that they that might be a problem for them if they don't have as good of people working the machine, then, then they aren't making as high quality product, which is um, one of their their selling points that they make better coffee than other vendors. And I thought that the way that they went about promoting their business was not very good. They were spending, I can't remember how much, but it was an obscene amount of money 25, on 2,000 flyers. And to only send out flyers and postcards and leave out social media, websites, even like a TV or a radio ad on the university TV or radio, um, that's really not hitting your target audience as effectively as you could. And another idea that we had to promote the product was to have something like a free sample out. It sounds like they're close to campus, so maybe some people will walk by it when they're getting to class and they'll say, oh, this is good, I should come here more often. They could also partner with other businesses around the area or work with the college and sponsor some of their events. So, in management and organization, we kind of found that they stated that they had like a manager, uh, like a professional manager and people who were like consultants and services like that ABC Expresso Services is 6.2, but we kind of thought that they didn't really state who was going to be people who worked there, how they were going to make sure that they were the most efficient workers, and how
how like who would who would they want to employ and who do they think would be best and how would they like be efficient and yeah. making sure that these employees provide the, the best in the service. They didn't really they also didn't state how they were gonna allow being on a college campus the people, the college students probably want a say in it, or like somehow like businesses have it so you can include them, mm -hmm. and how they're gonna appeal to the college students to wanting to wonder like, hey, if I wanted a flavor of coffee, how could I get to them that maybe you should try this? They didn't really state how they were gonna approach finding what the college students liked. And then in the long-term development, they didn't really state their risks or their approach to keeping it. They didn't really have like, like statements that really told them what they're starting out with or how it was gonna, they kind of just showed a chart and said that was it. And we felt that it needed a little more about risks, how they would deal with it. And then throughout the uh, plan, they kind of, had documentation. They said, you know, we have a backup with this company, we have a backup with this company, but no citations were used. It was all citations and resources and like, like a, kind of like a bibliography to prove that you had all this. Okay. It was not as reliable as it could have been. Anybody want to sum it up? I think they have a, I mean, a good kind of idea of what they want to do, but I think they need to just go a little bit more into depth on how they're going to be different. Okay. And um, it sounds like coffee places in the area are successful. They just need to say how they're going to pull sales from those other companies and be their own. Did you all look at the back page of this uh, FBLA guide? Oh, no. No. I might want to do that now. Mr. Leader, mm -hmm. I want you to read out those major criteria there. Comment or form fat, format or something like that. Clear and concise presentation with logical arrangement of information following the rating sheet categories. Did they follow the rating sheet categories? Because if you'll notice, you get graded off if you don't. They had their marketing sales split up into two different. Yeah, that was. So they would have lost points if they were in competition. Very confusing. Anything else uh, on that on that sheet? What's the next next point? Creativity of written presentation, design, and graphics. How many graphics in there? They had a chart, chart from the first year. That's about it. Then. So they would have been graded off on that too. What's the next criteria in there, Matt? Correct grammar, punctuation, spelling, and acceptable business style. Overall. Business style? Does it look about right? What are they missing at the top, at the beginning? Simple thing, it's called a cover page. It's telling the name of the company and the overall reason it's being developed in this stat. So that would have been graded on. What's the next point in that grammar and section? Punctuation, yeah. spelling. There, I was hoping you'd have time to get to that. There's, there's a lot of punctuation problems there. There's a lot of spacing problems in there. What's the next thing in that list? Acceptable business style. You guys have enough knowledge to know about that? If not, be sure to you hit your books when you do put them They may the not. Plan. And in the, in the um, FBLA, um, there's the format guide, and there is a specific style that your report should follow. Um, two inch top margin, one inch left and right margins, um, numbered list should look certain ways, table of contents should look certain ways, um, and that's in the format guide, which is uh, on the website and actually in my room in blue books. Yeah. Anything else on that list of criteria in the format? No. It doesn't yes. mention page numbers? Mm -hmm. They also didn't have a table of contents. It doesn't have a table of contents mm -hmm. either. Very good. So it's missing two of the top pages. Cover page, very simple thing, but you need to have one. That way, if the coffee spills on it, the body of the work doesn't get covered, and then a table of contents. So, if somebody's looking for something exactly what they want to read, they can just run their thumb down and find the page. 
Because I'll tell you, if this is being presented to a bank, they're not going to read the whole thing. They're only going to read the stuff that they need to know about. Okay? Um, now, you're going to be given the actual Java culture um, business plan. And they use a lot of graphics like this. They use pie charts. They get into a lot of detail. In fact, uh, the back page of the addendums, I think, are like 16, pa 12 pages long. Where they go into specifics about the business. I think they even talk about the importance of the espresso machine that they made. You guys, I think, did pretty good. All right? Any questions at this point on this exercise? Dana? Mm, that was good. Vern, do you have any questions or comments for them? Yeah, I think for the amount of time, had you read that at all before you went over there to pick it up? I'm impressed that you could absorb it and, you know, perceive that many valid insights on it so quickly. That's, uh, and but if you didn't catch the back on the scoring sheet, then that's some of those. That's easy. Those are easy to miss. But yeah, you guys are fast. <clears throat> Must be, must be rapid reading, take a class in rapid reading to do or something like that. <clears throat> we only take the best of the best. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm totally Mr. kidding. Green, <laughs> no, I was sitting here actually helping analyze the company and the business plan, and I, I came up with some other questions, but I was wondering. Good, like, please. That, um, that's be better better there, value. This, this is a startup business, right? Is that the way it's written? Mm -hmm. we, we don't exist today. Did they ever mention anything about... Uh, health requirements or the health department inspections or uh, any kind of licenses they're going to need to have to serve food and beverages? I believe in costs in there somewhere? they address um, different licensing and certifications. Okay, so they might have thought about it anyway. I want to say they did. Okay. I was curious why I think it was section two where it was uh, company description. Why would you want to put all your list your startup costs in that in that section? Why does startup cost belong in a company description section? I expect maybe JR maybe move those from one section to another section. Why do you Quite frankly, I did a lot of moving, but I don't remember what I did now. <laughs> I, I thought Cindy made a really good point on the credentials of the employees, though. Yeah. Because oh, you know, in effect, sure. you could have the big CEO up here and a big president and a whole bunch of financial bigwigs. The, the face of the company is often the person directly in front of you at the counter, you know, and, and they, I gather they didn't hardly discuss the credentials of training for the employees of this right. organization. That was a good point. Yeah, I felt like they didn't really talk about why they would be reliable. Like, they said that they had a few things, and like, it sounded like they knew what they were talking about, but they didn't have, like, main points that stood out to me, like, why they, why you could trust them. Mm -hmm. As compared to like any other person you walked in. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like they had? First of all, was it clear how many hours per day they were going to be open? No, no that's no, no, that's no idea. Maybe that would okay. differentiate them if they were open like at one a.m. till one a.m. or two a.m. Yeah, it could be. College students are studying. So my next question is, do they have enough employees planned to cover the hours that they're going to be open? See, that's difficult. Like at Linmar, you have to be open from nine to nine, seven days a week to even have anything there at Lindale Mall. Lindale Mall. So you, you're, you're employee, the subject of employees, and the against the clock is a challenge. And the reason I think of some of these things is because this is what happens in my Kirkwood class. Mm -hmm. They teach that I get these kinds of business plans, and they haven't thought through that, you know, I'm going to have a manager, and I'm going to have three assistant managers to cover the different shifts, and I'm going to have five employees, and then I go look at the financials, and they don't have the salaries of those people in there. So <laughs> how are you paying for all this? All that's got to got to connect together, I guess. Uh, one question I was sitting here thinking: Okay, have they picked a facility? Apparently, had a number of square feet. And you guys said, "Oh, maybe they need a little bigger plate, so they're going to differentiate themselves." But uh, do they have a parking lot? Do they have enough parking, or are they expecting walk-in traffic only? Is this a drive-up place, or is this are going to have drive-up lane? Any of that get addressed in part of their thinking of their business? The actual business was located right off the business sector, the downtown business sector. Okay. 
Okay. In the, so they're spending on street parking then, or it was not a concern. Okay. There's enough parking in other places to fill it. Okay. If I remember, they were wedged in between something and something. But I'm not positive. Business district and university campus. Okay. A lot of good traffic. But yeah, a lot of you guys picked up on a lot of good things. This, this I'm gonna I'm gonna look just like my competitor. Isn't gonna hack it. That was that's perfect. Yeah, that was a very had, good kind I've had students at Kirkwood that, I mean, these people really want to open a business. And this one female student I had, she's going to open a bar, and it's going to be the best bar in the world, and it's going to be better than anybody else's bar. And because we're going to have live entertainment, we're going to have, you know, I'm going to be open this many hours, and I'm going to do this and this. And said, that's not any different from anybody else. What makes you think people are going to, just because you open your doors doesn't mean people are going to come in. And that sounds like a little bit like what this business plan turned out to be. We're going to open our doors, and all these customers are going to successful and you're great to catch on that and say no not necessarily if you're looking just like the other guy they'll stick with who they know and love so I'm glad you caught all that all made sense everything you said made sense great very good I think you're given the time and the stress of putting this all together <laughs> I think the three of you did a very good job right from the very beginning when I told you that it was a team effort almost everything you'll do rest of your life will be a team effort. Whether business. you open your own business or not, business plan will serve you well. And it's the simplest endeavor. It's a roadmap, like somebody said. It's a GPS for your life. One of our other score counselors was talking to one of my clients one day, and he says, business is a team sport. And I really, that stuck with me. I really like that, that way of thinking. You've got to have an accountant. You've got to have, you may have to have an attorney. You may have to have banker and you may have to have your investors but business is a team sport you don't have to do it all by yourself you, know, you can't do it all by yourself just to share you a little one of the exercises they drove to drive that home at Rockwell Collins people have different personalities so they measured our personalities and then they put people with the same personality in a team same personality in this team some personality in this team and gave them problems and they were disasters mm -hmm. I mean, it was the most vivid demonstration I ever saw of how, like people who didn't have the complementary skills of the team, it's just like a football team, you know, you get the quarterback, the, the blockers, the runners, and the team is the key. And you, by the way, do you guys know each other very well? Um, yeah. Yeah, because well, you, you sure got together as a team pretty fast. Still pretty well. That's good.